The following content has been provided by New St. Andrews College in Moscow, Idaho. For more information, visit us online at nsa.edu. Welcome back to What Have You. I'm Rachel Jankovic. I am Becca Merkel. And we're drinking holiday flat whites and being behind on Christmas. And also behind Goodwill. Oh yeah, back to our old We're back. Grounds. We are back to the to the classics. Yeah. Starting back in from the rain. scratch. We're in the rain and the slush. It's well, it snowed, it was beautiful, then it rained on top of it. So it's less beautiful now. It's not beautiful, but it's still a vista. <laughs> we still have a vista. We still are gazing out over so, the top. So, what have we been doing? Well, I will tell you. I got through my Christmas party, as you know, on Friday. Yeah. Well, I should pause and say that that, that was everything that could go wrong with a Christmas party went wrong with the mm-hmm. Christmas party in advance. Well, you could just say with like, you know the kind of party that you throw for a lot of people where a squirrel eats your brownies? Yeah, the squirrel. That's the one. The squirrel ate the brownies. Now, the thing is, it, I should have known. <laughs> I should have known. This is obviously old news to us because we just comment. just like, yeah, that squirrel. Like I had a squirrel sabotage the kids' brownies. <laughs> so, no, but first, I should have known that the the whole thing was was destined to have a bumpy ride because I did these really. They were, I have to say, they were cute invitations, printed <laughs> RSVP cards. It was for. I the, forgot that this yeah, is how this it is, started. This is how we commenced. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it was a party for staff, faculty, and board for NSA and all their families. So it was like 150 total, like adults and kids. Um, And I did these cute invitations and I stuck them in all their pitch boxes at NSA. So then the board members don't have pitch boxes. So I was going to just hand those off and I handed one to you. Yeah. Then I handed one to my mom and she was like, oh, it's so cute. And she was reading it off. And she's like, okay, 6 o'clock, December 21st. And I was like, no, what? Does it say December 21st? <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it was, in actual fact, December 15th. <laughs> it's just nothing like and using had, last year's date. <laughs> and so I had just, I had used some of the text from last year's invitation. And then clearly I forgot to change the date because I was in a big hurry. And, and that was not a useful, it was not an important piece of information. It was, yeah. So, anyway, I had to go tearing back to NSA, wildly retrieve all the invitations <laughs> that I had handed out, then try and figure out who had already taken theirs, yeah. and then get them the news. And you don't know, like, who pulled it out of their pitch box, put it in their Google Calendar, and then set it back in their pitch yeah, box. Yeah, That's don't know. also possible. So Is anyway, there that person? There, was there might be that of, person. There was a lot of shenanigans to make sure everyone had the right date. Then we were doing these um, pork tacos, so it was like a caramelized pork and then a cucumber, pineapple, salsa, and sriracha sauce. On So that was the main thing. But I had to do like 40 pounds of pork, and you cut it all up in advance. So 40 pounds of pork and a whole bunch of citrus and, you know, orange and limes and onions and everything. And I had two giant roast ovens. I plugged them in to slow cook overnight the day before the party, so Thursday night. In the morning... We arise, and they were sizzling when I went to bed. They were they were getting going, and they were sizzling. We get up in the morning. The breaker had flipped, mm. and I had 40 pounds of raw pork that had sat at room temperature all the night long. So, like, That's really seven hours. Goal. When, seven when cooking, hours. When cooking large quantities of pork, it's best <laughs> to hold it at room temp for a long, long time. time. Indefinite. An long unknown time. amount of yeah. time. And you're, yeah. you're staring at all this pork going... Our house is pretty cold overnight, right? <laughs> You're like, nap. 
No. Nope. <laughs> so, and not to mention all of the... Fire me from the catering position yeah, exactly, if I ever make that call. All of the, like, yeah. hours of chopping it up in advance. So, it had been room temp for more than seven hours. It yeah. was like, because, you know, you get it from the store. I'd gone to Costco. And that equals not safe to eat. Not safe. So, we had to throw away, the day of the party, 40 pounds of pork, rush to the store, buy another 40 pounds of pork, start over, slow who cook it all day. those first 40 pounds anyways? No, and who needed that extra time in the morning when I was also giving finals still at school yeah I was having to run to school run back anyway Ben was a champion he cut up that 40 pounds for me and got it in the both times he cut it up got it in the roast ovens then I had done two trays of brownies for the little kids because the little kids go upstairs and they have pizza and you know stuff watch a movie so I'd made two trays of brownies somebody was going to pick them up off my porch and so I was like I'll just set them out there on the table and there was a snap-on lid which I then walk out onto the porch to surprise a squirrel who had taken the lid off. Like he had gotten the lid off the brownies and had eaten out one corner completely. He would like sitting on the brownies. <laughs> so then, like, it's so, not every day that no, that happens. No, so, and this you is know. also the day of the party. So then you're like, well, Nobody wanted the, a brownie. The kids will have half-sized the brownies that they were going to have because he only hit one pan. Because that's another food safety thing is to not <laughs> serve the brownie that the squirrel was sitting on. <laughs> Even though it looked untainted. Just a hot tip to our listeners. <laughs> Don't try to use it after the no, squirrel sat on it. After the rodents have been yeah, involved. Yeah, I'll leave it alone it now. Out. Let it go. So then, at the actual event... um. I borrowed Rachel's giant rice cooker, and I was going to do coconut rice in it. And for whatever reason, that rice cooker and that recipe did not gel They did together. not think it would work. So the rice cooker kept on just going on to warm. Like, I would put it on cook, yeah. and it would flip to warm. I think it was it was burning on the bottom, so I think it was just too thick of a anyway, thing. Anyway, so it and the rice off. remained crunchy throughout the evening. I couldn't ever even serve the coconut rice. So we had... I felt like the... the food table was a little thinner than I wanted it to be because the rice is kind of a piece of that you know it was like there's tacos and I, it had like but a, I should say from my perspective I ate the meal and it was I wasn't looking around wondering where the coconut rice was yeah it but was a good meal from my perspective looking at that buffet table and plus with the way everything went wrong that day I did not have time to get it like decorated very I cute didn't matter. Anyway, it was cute people was were good. fine nobody knew well except for that I told them but you because know, it was too funny to keep to yourself. It was too funny. Like, threw away 40 pounds of pork. The squirrel got at the brownies. First, I had the wrong date on the invitation. Anyway. It was good. It made me think that the forces of darkness were against us. I told Ben my theme verse of that day was, the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... But we got it's... through it. It was fine. And actually, I have to say, the pork tacos turned out, and it was good. Yeah. It, it worked. Yeah. It worked. But that was my that was my little excitement on Friday, and that was peeling right off of a finals week, so it was very we, busy. Our first day of break, my kids are on Christmas uh, on Christmas break now. It's first morning, the early mornings of Monday for Christmas right. break, setting the tone for how we were gonna do. Yeah, over the break, our dog, who typically is not a great evildoer, <laughs> stole became one four. Of those big plastic candy canes full of Rolos, which were a support piece to some nephew Christmas gifts. They oh, would like to make yeah. it a little more fun, you know, yeah, like uh-huh. those snitched those and must have taken several trips down to the basement because she went off into the back, the loom room, as mm-hmm. the kids call it, to eat four candy canes full of Rolos <laughs> and then awoke us by coming and vomiting colored foil by our bed. So it was like just really setting the tone for how <laughs> Christmas break was going to be so peaceful and chill and nothing, oh, no. nothing untoward was going to happen, oh, you dear. know? So um, yeah. that was that. Yeah. So really started it all off with a bang oh, and we didn't even know what she had eaten. Like we were just like, what is this? Like gross. And then uh, later when the wreckage of the candy canes was found. We were mm-hmm. like, oh. and the the one other thing that our dog cannot resist, and we've tried many times to have them in the house, and she just can't 
she just becomes a demon dog in the Why? presence what? of it. That um, chapstick, Eos chapstick, whenever that isn't it? E O S. Those little brown balls. Yeah, whenever my girls have one of those, she eats them. She just <laughs> eats the chapstick. Like there's something, but there's other chapsticks that have safely lived in our house. That brand Weird. just get she munches them up wow. every time. Yeah. Wow. She's a chapstick anyway, lover. Well, given all of my hurricane-like activities on the weekend, the before the weekend, I had not gotten any Christmas shopping really at all done. So I have been living the Amazon dream yesterday and this morning already. I have been ordering up like, well, I really had nothing. I had, yeah. so I still have miles to go, but I have done some good Take work. action. Some good work. Start but I'm going to have now. a horrifying, horrifying amount of wrapping to get done come mm-hmm. Thursday and Friday when those boxes start rolling in the door. But we are making progress. So that's yeah. good. And... Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Congratulations. That's where I have been. Uh huh. So you got through your Christmas party. I got through mine. Mm-hmm. We lived to tell the tale. Did I do a Christmas? Oh, yes, yeah, I did. I think last time, weren't we saying I both was like, of us I think one? I've lately just been attending Christmas parties. No, you, and there's you no you real major one. congratulations to me for having attended a Christmas party. No, but it's so far in the rear view mirror that yeah, you I forgot, forgot that that's you forgot happened. that you did the Ladies passed, Fellowship Christmas party. I passed party. it on by. Oh man! Making, so somebody like, asked yeah, us. Yeah, because you were making tons of bread for it last time oh, we spoke. Right. So somebody um, asked us to talk about how we, what we do about gifts in our family, and it oh, is true yeah. that if ever, I can't remember if any of us has ever proposed drawing names. Occasionally, someone and sometimes throws it that comes out there. up, but I don't think it's any. I don't think it. I think it's usually someone else who's not in our family who feels burdened. No, or for one us. of us will be like, "Should we ever think about that?" And then there comes this sort of roar from the crowd with the heat of a thousand suns. <laughs> that is no, like, no, never. never. So we have a thing where Christmas morning we all do Christmas by ourselves in our own homes our with own our kids, homes. which is important. I think that that's an important piece. I, you know, like oh no, I wouldn't want to ever give that up. That's no. an important thing that we just no. Have but Christmas I know sometimes home. big families, you know, like it just ends up everybody does it all at once. Oh yeah, and, no, we have our own little Christmas times at home. Then we gather. Last year it was on Christmas Eve because of because of Sunday and everything. Did but, we? Yeah, because I think Christmas was church, was Sunday morning last year. Did we do that? Uh huh. We moved it a day. Weird. Yeah, I don't remember that. Well, oh, anyways, odd. then we all gather. We have a big brunch and we do gifts with each other. But that is where At mom and dad's house. Everybody, mom does a stocking for every kid. Yeah. And then every family brings a gift for everyone. But they're small. Like, totally small. But I feel like we would probably, the mood of our family is that we would rather wrap and deliver single packs of M&M's to everyone yeah. than not have <laughs> gifts for everyone. Like, we're yeah. like, we don't care how cheesy, yeah. how bad, how lame the gift is. No. We actually, it's so, so like, I'm really not interested in, and I think I can speak for the whole family, that we are not mercenary gift receivers. No. So, like, in the side of, like, this is so wasteful, if you had all just chipped in, I could have bought something I really wanted. That is no. a thing that we abominate a lot. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, like, buy off of my wish list only. No, we don't. No, no, we no. don't tolerate these mm-mm, things. Mm-mm. So. Well, like, okay, I years ago, this is probably five years ago maybe now, the kids still recall the time I didn't bring Christmas gifts because it was like I was up late the night before manufacturing what theoretically was going to be a cool gift Mm -hmm. for the cousins. And then it involved spray painting it and I spray painted them all before bed and then I woke up in the morning and it was still wet. And I was like weird. So then I didn't bring them to the brunch. And I was like, it's okay, guys. I'll bring them for Christmas dinner. Still wet. Like, never did dry. Super weird. And so I didn't take... And then by the time... Then clearly it was... Clearly it had not worked. And so then it was like, shoot. I'm going to have to start over. And then time drifts past. And I never did. I still (laughs) owe everyone. That was the year Becca got an A for effort. Yeah. You did all of it. Maybe there was a bad squirrel that came and ruined it. I think the thing that's important... (laughs) 
Earth, why is this getting... Am I, did I turn this all off here? I turned it off because it was making weird rattling noises. Oh, yeah, but I can't do a foggy car. No, you shouldn't fine. sit in a foggy car. Okay, everyone, you're going to have to cope with a rattle. Yeah, while the noise. We, so, while we, we didn't have a... We just believe... We're believers in the gift giving. Yeah. So, it's fun. And it's a thing that we care about. Mm-hmm. We Everybody comes in with a impossible bucket full of yeah. gifts and and it is total chaos because yeah. you're like yeah. like where's Rory Rory where are you here's your gift Rory and, and like you're like wandering around with giant black garbage bags like yes, just put it in just here put, put it in here. here put it in here so I buy those um those cheap you know like Michaels or lots of places have the like reusable shopping bags you Every know, year I have plans. The big plasticky totes. Of doing that. So I buy those and write in Sharpie a name on those. And then every oh. kid has their bag that their gifts at home that they put their gifts in there as they, like when they open them so that their gifts stay in See, a See, I need to just do that because I always have these ideas of making it something personalized and course, awesome. Of and, course. And so that's yeah. why my children have all grown up with never having a place to put them because I've never yeah, just Yeah, but the bag the helps bag. and it helps to have them take a bag to Nana and Papa's too yeah. so that we have a place that they put their thing, you know. Yeah. So we do that. And then, uh, yeah, and it's fun. And I actually find that I go in different phases for years. If you think it is like too hard to buy people the same gift, well, like, I, I mean different gifts every year i i don't think any of the men in our family care how often i repeat the wool socks in a beer routine i'm like it's your yearly pair of smart wools from us (laughs) and none of the men listen to our podcast so i can say this year they're getting darn tough socks and (laughs) and i'm turning this off it's rattling and driving me nuts and a beer probably chimay or something you know like i get them like a fun beer and socks one year i got them like a cool like a bullet a big bullet bottle opener and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. but we yeah. don't in general what we do is nobody cares if it's repeated they're always no. glad to get another pair of socks it's oh, yeah. not like it matters and I frequently will do the same gift for all the nieces and the same gift oh, for yeah. the nephews oh, oh and, yeah My, I have I have nephews nieces you have um I was in fact the men's department gifts this year feature heavily the darn tough socks because mm-hmm. because all the way back in like June, I went into Tri State and they had a really cool pair of them on clearance for like yeah. half off. So they were nine bucks or seven bucks or something. It was it was yeah. um, way more in my in the ballpark of what I know. I spent sure. twenty bucks on all of the nephews or all of no. that. Like so, it's about it's l- lesser. Yeah. So. I just bought like however zillions of pairs of that darn tough sock, and yeah. I've had it in a box in my closet this right. whole time. So well, I scored for all the nieces the little. I was just telling you this little bracelets. It's actually a cute little like gold bracelet, but it holds a black hair elastic around your Perfect. wrist, and it actually is kind of cute. But I found it like I'd seen them for like thirty dollars, but I found them in an outlet mall for way discounted. So I basically yeah. just bought out their whole. The g- supply give of me those. all you've got yeah. of these. <laughs> Last of year in January, I went into an anthropology having its big clearance sale. I found these little embroidered pouches. They're like a keychain pouch with a tassel, whatever, with the initials, oh, with yeah, an initial nice. embroidered on it. And it was like we got that basket down, and I mean, we searched like, are there all of yeah. the nieces' initials yeah. in yeah. here? And then, ta-da. We got them. We nailed it. But that was in January. Like, yeah. b- way before. So, if you're going to be buying gifts for this many people, you do need to be having a yeah. running start. Because yeah, it gets lame if you're... Or, you could just go with Rolo candy canes if your dog likes them. <laughs> well, I wish I had gotten a running start, but I didn't get much one. Other than the niece ones. But No, but it just helps. I'm just saying it, it yeah. helps to be thinking but about it. In I like the overabundance of gifts. Even if they're, like funky and small and you know like it's just a great no and one of the things that I love about it is that my kids all think of themselves as being gift givers yeah because they're like like Daphne has a list of things we need to buy for her to make all of the uh-huh. all of the cousins yep. earrings like she's mm-hmm. like I have a lot of gifts to give yeah and it, while it just continues to add to the chaos yep it also is making people who love to give and I yep. and that's really important which is really awesome. that's like the key yep. 
the key that we care about. Yeah, it's exactly. That, yeah. So basically, we give a lot of gifts. So that's not we that do. we're trying to, not that we're trying to be judgy of people who who don't. No, who we do lots of gifts. Draw but, names, but we don't do massive, extravagant lots of gifts. We keep it. No, we, we don't keep it on the small end. But, but it is. It does make for a fun party. And then we all go home and we lay on the floor and we pant for a while. Yeah, breathe and into a we, paper bag at home for a and bit. And then we go back and we do a Christmas dinner at Mom and Dad's. And that's where Rachel is. Are you going to bring your bouche? I'm totally going to bring a bouche, bouche de, de Noël. Noël. I don't know what else we're having. We need to figure that out. Um, anyway. And we always do, well, typically do Chinese takeout Christmas Eve. You do Chinese takeout Christmas Yeah, you guys have been for a while. We I don't do. know what we're doing this year because now we, we have other family. sisters and her it's husband fun. makes spaghetti and meatballs and it's fabulous. And we yeah. do our celebration with them on Christmas Eve. Yep. And that is also fun. We always do a pinata for whatever reason. We've been doing it with the cousins since they were little and we do a pinata out outside in the snow and... Um, so it's, and it's gotten funnier as the kids have gotten bigger, actually. So we still, like, one of them is married and I'm two are in college and we're still doing the pinata. And, and now that we, we actually, <laughs> Rachel really can't handle fog on the window. I can't well, take I a can't fog. I can't either if I'm driving, but it's, somehow if I'm parked, It's I'm the okay. basis. It's one of the foundational problems of my overstimulated Yeah. Okay, well, we'll just roll it down. Anyway. The thing is, is that uh, we now live on a corner across the street from St. Mary's Catholic Church. And we have not planned it this way. It just keeps happening that we're, <laughs> we're doing a pinata out on the corner because that's where the yeah. tree is. As all of the Catholics are rolling in for the Christmas Eve service. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, don't mind us. We're all dressed for the Christmas Eve service ourselves. But we're doing a pinata in the snow. Don't worry about us. And so, so we I, used to do Mexican food, which is why the piñata happened. But yeah, somehow it morphed. I love to, that. It, I love it. It's it so morphed good. into a, a piñata and then spaghetti and meatballs. I told so, I told <laughs> Becca that Moses, our two year old, has just right on time with Christmas out popped the the uh, the old man. The old man <laughs> out popped Adam. Adam. Adam has oh, come. Adam, there you are. Yes, you're like there you are. But he's it's just this. So stinkity funny. No, I have to turn this on because I'm freezing now. So okay, we're well, gonna everyone's gonna cope with the rattle so that Rachel will roll her window. So up. my nightmare life would be gosh, we've got to get that stuck fixed. inside of a red interior car because they smell worse. Mm. They smell like a nice I plush don't, red. I don't velour. know. It's from my childhood. I don't know if they actually if the red upholstery actually smells like the red dye, but red interiors of cars from the what era were those from that I would have to be in the I 80s? I would say 81. 80? That like bourguignois. <laughs> <laughs> that horrible fuzzy the Chia Pet car. You mm-hmm, know those? Mm-hmm. My grandparents had one that was red interior. You'd get in there and I would just it was like instantaneous sickness. And so yeah. I remember developing my theory was that like worst case would be my hair's down, which it is right now. Yeah, it is. So that's adding to the so fog. So going problem. down your turtle. And I was like, then you'd be wearing a turtleneck or something equally frustrating, <laughs> and you'd a have your with hair down. Yes, you'd have something. The radio would be on, just enough to be bothering you, but not enough to, to really be, hear it. Yeah, right. And probably one of the windshield wipers, because the interior would be fogged, so it'd have to be like <laughs> raining. And one of the windshield wipers would have to be missing a major section a of the of the windshield. Yeah, and then and then ideally there would be some sweet smells, like people eating donuts or something. <laughs> and that is my ultimate seventh level of hell. That is, it is my seventh level of hell plus what would probably make me do some glorious car sickness, though. Yeah. So, anyways, fog on the windows. I have to act early and act fast. Okay. To, well, to fine. Deal. And now we're all gonna have a rattle so that Rachel doesn't. Have yeah. A, sorry. Sorry, a guys. Fog. I'm a needy person. So, anyways, back to Moses and the old man. Oh, yeah. Popping out, out. the cloven. Oh hoof. my word! We were laughing so hard because he's <laughs> yesterday. He's at the table like playing with something, messing around, and then Shad says from behind by the Christmas tree. Shad says, "It's like oh." There's a present for me. And Moses startles like he had um, been shocked or something. Like, like it's just like, <gasps> and he just yells, Shad, mine, mine, mine. <laughs> and I'm like, and well, like, hello, Adam. 
hello, hello, the sin nature of man. There you are. And so, so Moses has been in kind of an intensive training camp for godliness. At Christmas can I time. just throw in a side, a side editorial remark? Yeah. Never, never let that flip past unaddressed. No, my heavens above. Because, well, unless you want it to stick. Yeah, unless, unless you want it to stick. Unless this is the new way that you want your child to be. And then you want to picture that in a 35-year-old man. Oh, yeah, it goes real well. The, anyways, the the thing that we've been doing with Moses is saying, dragons say mine, good guys say yours. <laughs> it's like, so that's that's the rule. Are so, you a dragon or are you the guy who kills the dragon? Moses plays with guns a lot with... Um, rifles or nerf guns or whatever and one of his things is dragons because he'll ask Uh me to he'll come up and ask me to open the door for him and i hope i hold the door open and he shoots dragons out the back door well that's it's a thing he does so the dragon is it's like are you are you being being the guy who kills the dragons or are you gonna be the dragon actually when our kids were little we actually had an offense maybe i've said this before an offense in our household was being a dragon. Yeah. And it was generally what it meant was you've taken the treasure and you're, you're lying, lying on, on top of it and you won't let anyone else have it. Which is it. amazing that that's actually a thing kids do. It's like hoard the blocks and lay and on lay top on of them. them. Lay yeah. on them uh-huh. so that no one else may you're touch like, the block. like, this is actually just like a dragon. Yeah. And that's not the thing we like, want you to be. do you be. see how you're being a dragon? Now mm-hmm. we're going to go into the bedroom and talk about that. Yeah. Anyway. So, so being a dragon is Moses a special been, temptation at Christmas to become oh, it is. a dragon. And I think it's Moses just hit that age where he's Find like him, aware. It on again. He's aware of Christmas. He's aware of presents. He's aware of like, and he's aware that he will get some. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, our heating department yeah, is failing us guys, today. It's kind of a pain. So anyways, he, it's so funny though. Cause so I have the big thing of peppermints for him. So after we've recovered and talked through the issues, he has to go around offering them to the kids and saying, Merry Christmas, Lena, like giving them a peppermint without him having any. He has to do it oh. without having any. So after he's given them to everyone and said Merry Christmas to everyone, he has to give me the bucket of them. And then I will give him one and say Merry uh-huh. Christmas. Okay. About so like yeah. you're not, you have to be the person who can do this can dispense yeah you have to be the person who does not scream mine 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 when you hear someone else get a gift but you don't even know what it is you don't even know you don't have any knowledge whatsoever but you know that the wrong name was attached to that gift it's so funny it is it is such a basic well oh it's it's just real taps into the primary nature of yeah and the kind of yeah. I feel like it's right in there where the love of money is the root of all kinds oh, of yeah. evil. This is basically that exact problem. Yeah, it's the only kind of wealth he has access yeah. to. So, why don't we should change the subject here yeah. for Christmas. All right. so, Let's talk about something else. Something we got a great question that I thought was would be totally worth talking about on the podcast. Which was basically, let me see if I can even summarize it. Basically someone who's wondering because of... Um, wondering because of us talking about food so much if we think that food is a thing that women are like a like a woman who is being a wife and mother um is required to be interested in or caring about um basically let's see I'm trying I'm looking at the question right now uh She said, the issue is, I have certainly been convicted via the podcast of not pursuing this area as I should for my family, but I just don't know what is the as I should part. Like, what is the part? Like, I think the question comes down to, um, I think the question comes down to, what if this isn't my my natural level of interest. It's like, I'm not naturally interested in this, but I'm a wife and a mother and I'm responsible for the food. So does it matter that I don't like it? Like, yeah, is right. this something that I have to confess that I'm not interested in doing the food? Because it's, the way we talk about it, we are both obviously interested in the food. Yeah. Um, but I would say that our mom is now, but she wasn't when we were, when we were younger. Yes, she was. No, different. It was different. Like, uh, I was talking, about, I was thinking about this because when we were little, it was a different era. Like, we live in a small town food diversity was not really a thing. Like there was iceberg lettuce and that was all 
There was no Parmesan cheese. There was no Parmesan. No, there was like, like I remember our whole growing up was good food because someone who loved you was giving you the best food that they could, but it was not a, um, like it was great food. She made spaghetti or like stew or roast. It was great. She, she loved us. She made homemade bread. She, she invested a lot in the food. That's what I mean. Like she was always interested in cooking. She was always, she was always taking care of us with food, but I, but the way she is now is just leagues ahead of where she was then, but she, it's been a continuous path of just faithfully. I have to just qualify that though. I think she, her, her demeanor towards it is the same as, that it's always been, but the repertoire, the opportunities, the things yeah. she cooks now, the well, level at which they're that's also different, different because it's driven by a love of her people because it's been Sabbath dinner that yeah. has done that. If she was just feeding, it would not require nearly as much interesting variation or changes or whatever for her to just be feeding well, I don't know, but I mean, just dad and mom eating together at night, they're happy with just having a salad in the summer. You know what I mean? Like, they're not like, I think what I'm trying to say is the reason she has so much of a repertoire is from loving so many people, like from, sure. and consistently doing that. So yeah. I guess the thing that I, I'm, I just mean, I remember her always being that way. It's just that it was, it was with the limited resources that limited, were available. Yeah, yeah. Like, but it was, so it was like different sorts of kinds of food that she made, but it wasn't that she didn't use no, to. No, I'm now not she trying does. to say she changed. I'm just, I mean that she changed, like she went through a conversion about food or something. It's just that, that she's in a different place than she is now. And my point, sure. my point is that where you are now should not, no matter what, be where you are in 25 years or whatever. Sure. Whatever you're doing, like, faithfulness will continue to move you along. Like, you'll continue uh-huh. to be doing things. Well, and I would say, I, like, for people who are not naturally interested in it, I get that that's tough because doing something you're not naturally interested in is, well, it's one of the most tedious it's things. self discipline But I think often you can grow to love something that you don't think in advance that well, you will. Well, it's love bestows loveliness. And the more you give yourself in that way, the more you delight in it and the more yeah. you want but to. But I would also say like, so maybe it doesn't naturally interest you, but does it naturally interest your family when you love them that way? And if yeah. it does, if it's kind of like, cause the thing is, is if your husband just really wants cheese flippies and that's all, you're not going to bless him by you getting just, out a mushroom risotto. The fact like, that you just said cheese flippies. <laughs> It's hilarious because that was the that was the Lamaro's take on the Lamaro's take on a quesadilla. To call it a, a cheese d- flip a dang quesadilla. A dang quesadilla. So anyway, the the thing that the thing that I think is important is to walk back from the question of where you feel to see like what's the role of food in the life of a believer. And the thing that I would say is that just just super fundamentally like let's just back it up back it up back it up at the center of of life really the center of the world is a table like it is a yep. table it's the center of our worship services it's the center of God's relationship with man is a table of bread and wine like and yep. that and that the bible when it says better is a a dinner of herbs where love is than yeah. than delicious food with no love is like that's true. Like if you're if you're out of fellowship with everyone, uh, but cranking out gourmet meals, pity on them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's a yeah. horrible life. At the same time, it's it's foolish to act like we can only have those two options yeah. because what we can have is love and a beautiful meal. Right. Like we don't have to and that's the reason that a dinner of herbs where love is is better is because that is actually participating in the central meal of fellowship with Christ and mm-hmm. each other. And and where there's strife and a meal, you're you're not eating at a table at, at that table. So But I also think if you just think what the Bible has to say about food, there are so many things going on there. Like you're talking about the Lord's Supper. Christ is the sacrifice that we eat. Mm-hmm. God says he will set a table for us in the presence of our enemies. It's like there's well, a how lot. much Jesus himself ministered <laughs> to people through food. Through food. How much but he then and also, not not just the food of his body, but the times when he took pity on them because they were hungry and he didn't want them yeah. to go away unfed and he right. didn't want you know like that and then was then there's a the thing. just just 
he designed us to have to eat over and over and over and Three, over. Like, like you every can't, day. Yeah. Like, several times. You don't necessarily have to eat three meals a day, but that's culturally but still, what we do. Yeah. But at the same time, that the fact that our bodies need that that yep. often and that in order to get it, so much care has to go into it. Yep. It's reflective of creation. Like we don't graze. No. We can't just go out in the field and eat something. What somebody has no. to like even the simplest foods have to be prepared. But that goes back to like where did mankind fall? It was with a food and what yeah. was the curse was you're gonna dig it from the ground, it's gonna be the sweat of your brow. But then you also have how much more will you appreciate God's creation if you decide to just embrace it because you think like he could have just made us take pills three times a day to give us the normal and that, nutrients. That tasted like nothing. What if it was like manna, little pellets, the little pellets of not stuff like manna where you'd make it into bread or something, but just a pellet, like a pellet stove pellet that if yeah, you just, you just pop they just that. rain down and you eat one of those. You just and give then yourself you a little injection. Yeah, but like, no, like why do we have to eat? Why but also, we like you couldn't ever possibly exhaust the options that God has put in the world for us. And the more you investigate it in the, in this the realm of taste, your the more father. you, the more you realize the abundant provision that he has made for us to enjoy. Like, yeah. why did well, he like, make so many tastes? Like something that I've heard that I think is, that is beautiful is that wine and cheese from the same area go together. Like the same, um, atmospheric conditions pair them well mm-hmm. together like they taste yeah. incredible together and people say that it, that goes further that bread that that the grains mm-hmm. of certain areas like whatever anyways the the thing that I'm trying that we're trying to say is that food and eating together and the table is something that God put at the center of the universe and that is not as Luke said this. It's not a thin metaphor. No, it's a really thick one that you could just keep on going and going and mm-hmm. going with. So, and how much can you bless your people with food? I mean, that no, is it's just a, it's like an opportunity that you have so many times every day. Yeah, and then you think in your children's childhood, how many opportunities to bless them have you had? And we should clarify, we're not talking about blessing them by just giving them the most decadent. No. Whatever. We're not we're not trying no. to say how many times a day could you give yourself your kid a jello pudding that no. would make him happy. But it's like the thing is is it's <clears throat> it's we all know how fun it is to have a really good meal. And whatever your version of and a really it, good it's meal complicated is complicated. But like like I at least I think from the cooking perspective, trying to capture the mood of life at that time, like what sounds good, like yeah. what would be the thing that would delight everyone, like because yeah. there are days that really soup is the thing that everyone yeah. is like, yay, yeah. and and it is just an interesting, it's like a, it's an interesting thing to do, but if you're not naturally inclined towards it, it doesn't mean you still have to orient your life around what God gave us like so you don't have to you don't have to dream about it at night or be so excited no. about it or whatever but, but I would just say baby steps yeah just, just baby steps. pursue it and and as far as that particular question goes pray about it like like just say lord make it clear to me if I have a bad attitude about this and and if I don't help me to take small steps yeah. towards learning more about or this if it's or, just like it's not super interesting like there's things that I feel like it's fine you don't have to be interested in it. like computer programming to me leaves me utterly devoid of enthusiasm. Like I'm not interested in it at all. But on the other hand, I don't think that food is quite in that same category. You know, like we all have to eat food every day, even if you're not interested in cooking it. Even if you don't like it, it, you're making decisions about it. it. You're making decisions about it every day, multiple times. And so I don't think there's any requirement that everyone has to be gourmet. But or like you don't have to be gravitating towards the food magazines or like I can't wait. Like there's no need to do think that you have no. to be. But I also think that this is an area where the more you dig and the more you learn, the more you can be just stunned at God's creation. Well, like I'm just going to say something. I'm going to soar to the next level of too many things that we're bringing up oh, right now. Why not? But feminism has had so much to do with our perspective of not admiring this kind of work. Oh, like yeah. we we think of it as not being important or powerful. Unless you're getting paid for it. Yeah, In which case chef. it becomes valid. It's cool then. The thing but the thing about it that is 
feminism teaching us that this is not important work if it's serving others. Like if you're serving, if you're doing it for other people, this is the thing is that women, when the Bible talks about women being a weaker vessel, um, or women being like, I think it is not saying like, it's not saying women are, don't have strengths or don't have power in certain areas. So for instance, the strongest warrior in the world cannot make a baby. Do you know what I mean? Like it's Mm -hmm. a different kind of strength, but it is also, it's not strength. That's not fighting. I think that that's the thing that, that is, you think, well, we're in this big battle to, you know, whatever. And I have to stay at home and do the thing that doesn't matter. Like that's, that tends to be the perspective. And it is like, no, because the work of having children and raising children, as my husband says, um, we're just like what we're trying to do with our children is we're trying to shape their loves and their loyalties. We're trying mm-hmm. to give them and and fat that, souls. That's what we always and used that, to that say. That is give not them fat souls. Yes, and that that is not a thing that is not impactful in the world. No. And so when you when you think of things like I, so one thing that really matters to my kids is the homemade Danishes Christmas morning. That matters. Yeah. And for whatever reason, that one got traction. I've made things that didn't get traction. Mm -hmm. That was one that they were like, this matters. But I know every year that you do that again, you are just shaping. It's like just shaping how they think of, like, it's just a certain kind of joy that shapes the kind of people you have. Like, women are in the business of making people. And that's a shocking thing when you think about it. Like, beyond just having the baby, I'm talking about you're shaping people like, what are their, you know, default, like, how do they think through different issues? What are they yearn for? What do they lean towards? What are they, you know, mm-hmm. you're shaping all kinds of things. Um, and food is one of the primary weapons that a mother has in like the culture building yeah. people shaping. This is an incredible, this is an incredible resource that you could be yeah. using for great good. Right. And that that's the thing that it's like, whether or not it's kind of like um weaponry is a bad I guess I'm just saying if you really needed to be equipped if you really cared about the fight God has given you an amazing weapon yeah. here which is and to not pick it up or to not be interested in it is in some way not really you know it's like you got to honor God with what he's given us. Yeah. And that's not to say that every meal must be phenomenal. Because, of course, oh, it's word. like... There you are be so, most so of the many time. days you're like, make yourself a dang quesadilla. Yeah. Or like, make yourself a piece of toast. Yeah, there's stuff in there. Have right. some cereal. Make yourself an egg. I don't care. You know, like, there's plenty of totally. that. Totally. But it's also just, like, being the kind of person who who knows how to minister to people through food. I I do not. I need like as much as I am into food and as much as I like to feed people and I work on it. I am far from having a, a incredible menu plan always going. Like yeah. I mean like last night what I fed my children for dinner was a bag of Costco wontons with <laughs> with rice and like a and like a dipping sauce that we made up. It was like a speed dinner of like yeah. here. We'll see and like last night though for me it was like oh my word I'm not at school. I'm not teaching. Right. This is fun. We're on break. I was like it felt like you were saying earlier what sounds good right now. I went out and just bought a pile of steaks and did baked oh, potatoes. Oh that's super fun. Yeah. Where it's like and we did like a blue cheese butter on top mm-hmm. with some green onions mashed in there and it was yeah. like it was on point, I must say. Yeah, you and tapped so, into what everyone wanted. It was like, yeah, a big steak and a big totally. potato. That is the answer. Mm-hmm. And so, anyhow. No, I just, but like, I'm just trying to say that the fact that we're saying this is powerful and important and whatever is not the same thing as, as it being like like thinking we in any way have every single meal as being an no. incredibly spiritual no. thought through event. No. Because it's not. And it, and, and oftentimes I'm confident you're like, that it never, that it for never will be. Yeah, you like, know. I'm pretty confident that it never is going to be no. that I'm all over every single meal. But, no, but I, we have as a lot time of goes chances. on, I am more all over parts of different meals. Like, yeah. you know, I'm just learning, working my way and through it. And you've got life to, like, get better at it. And you yeah. have to eat three times every single day for the rest of your life. So Yeah, but I think it's most important to accept the fact that this is the world that God made and that it's not 
us disproportionately valuing it. It's his. No. It's no. his he's decision this that this is where it goes. And he's given us a wild variety of things to learn about and choose from. And, and I always think how funny it is that, like, if you think about some of our staples of, I don't know, chocolate and peanut butter. And you think, how many steps did it take before you unlock could get that, that, magic? that magical pairing? Uh-huh. Where it's like, you chocolate without mm. sugar... Or is, shallots and cognac. Okay, I haven't gone there, but... I mean, when you deglaze a okay. pan of shallots with, with cognac, cognac, and it's unbelievable. Sure, but you think about, like, chocolate without sugar is nothing to shout about. And then you take the chocolate and the sugar and the peanuts... Oh, man, did you and see... And it's like, Did whoo! you ever see that video of the of the chocolate farmer who had never tasted chocolate... With sugar? Yeah, he, no. he, made, he farmed cocoa, and, and he was like, I just... He had, was like, I don't know why people like this. Like, oh, he didn't funny. know. Somebody brought him a... a like a prepared chocolate bar yeah. and they videoed him tasting it and it was like, like he had a moment of like what <laughs> all this time I've had this well, delicious substance but, on but hand but then you think about okay how many more flavors are out there that we have not even come close to finding yet like yeah. you know that there are things like well, ice and, cream and how how awesome is it like we live in a really unique moment where world cuisine is available to Accessible. us and so the fact yeah. that people say the fact that we can say i don't know what do you feel like eating mexican chinese like yeah. what is hilarious like yeah. that's like really bizarre because for most of life yeah. For most of people, there was no question of that kind of yeah. thing. You're like, yeah. would you like to have the pheasant well, that we shot in the, like, in the field? Or would Sunday, you like to have the venison that we yeah. shot in the field? <laughs> on Sunday, we did this Moroccan chicken that my kids really like. And I hadn't done it in a while. And so we dug that one out of the annals because I had a bunch of chicken quarter like legs in the freezer. Uh-huh. So I pulled them out. Anyways, I received a phone phone call. Anyway, the Moroccan chicken, it's just all these flavors that I don't normally cook with. So, like, heavy on turmeric and lemon and, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. it was just, it was a really fun extra thing. And totally, we wouldn't eat like that every day, but it was such a fun, like... Well, just think about your spice cabinet and think about where did all that come from? Yeah. Like all these little powders of yeah. flavor yeah. that came from fields all over the world. Yeah. That have been processed and jarred and sent to you to better enjoy your food. So with. that you can and decide then, to try just, curry. Like, like, do you even know where your paprika came from? <laughs> like, do you even know what is a paprika? I'm pretty sure it's a pepper, isn't it? Some kind of a pepper that's like dried know. and ground. And then you've got salmon but, bark. Yeah, you got trees from Vietnam giving you their bark to flavor up your holiday things. And, you know, there's a level on which you just have to think deeper about it and thank the Lord. Like, yeah. be like, this is a tremendous amount of gift. Like, there have been people, you know, like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. And then just things you can do with cream. <laughs> and then like, here's another mind whoa. blowing. Daphne made me laugh so hard the other day because she said, she was like, Mom, wouldn't it be amazing if, and then she said, I'm going to stop right there. And she said, because last time I started a sentence with that, I said, wouldn't it be amazing if you could cook an egg inside of its shell? <laughs> and she said, and then I realized I was just completely ignorant that that's how we made hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> that just so made me laugh. Like, how did you miss that piece of info, child? And, uh, but... The point is, like, like looking back, like, fundamentally in more gratitude at how you were given the food resources that you were given. Yeah. And it's like, Lord, you're kind to us. Like, yeah. this is yeah. unbelievable that we're like, basil? Hmm. Yeah, let's use basil. Fresh or dried. Yeah. Which way would you like that flavorful yeah, ingredient? Exactly. Like, how, I don't know. There's just so much. Yeah. There's so much gift in it. And, and I think just, like, take a couple little steps in and then just wait there and then take yeah, another like couple even, little even steps Even if it's in. something like, I mean, I we have no way of knowing what your regular food habits are, but even if it's something really minor, like why don't I try making a homemade salad dressing? Yeah. Like why don't I try to find a salad dressing that yeah. I can make that my whole family loves yeah. the most? And right. then I'll work on that and then we'll just see if that encourages people and yeah. blesses people and we'll and see. And then sometimes it's just like, I'm going to buy a new pan. Whoa. And just try. Yes, and I just do. Try. I would like to say at this point, invest yourself in sharp knives. 
Oh, mine because are so dull now. Nothing so dull. brings a life down quite like having dull knives. Mm-hmm. When you're trying to cut up like a no, roast and you're sawing it and sawing it and sawing yeah. it and mm-hmm. just it reflecting bad. on the evil textures of raw meat <laughs> while you can't get through it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we probably should we stop. We should go. We, sh- we need to be done. We're looking there- forward to a Merry Christmas. Yep. And Hope there were some too. other questions we meant to get to, but we didn't. So maybe we'll next, next time. time. We'll get there. All right. Merry Have Christmas. Have a lovely to all. Christmas, everyone. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. New St. Andrews College thanks you for listening.